And she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what? and she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what? Let's get it Howdy, y'all. Hope you're all having a great day. Welcome to the Just Ask Joey podcast, episode three. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where you will find a self-described former idiot answering your questions to help you avoid idiocy in your life. Either you see some idiocy coming, or you're in the middle of idiocy, or you're trying to get over your idiocy. This is the place where you can ask the questions with no judgment, with no BS, I'm not worried about your feelings. I'm worried about you getting the correct answers for your situation to help you get over it or under it or around it or through it and move on with your life. If you are wanting to submit questions, you can find me on right here, Snapchat and Twitter and submit the questions. You can DM me. So kind of keep it, keep it private if you'd like. Um, if you want to shout out, I can do the shout out. If you want me to not mention your name, I can absolutely not mention your name, but I'm here to help. And I wish I had something like this when I was kind of going through my stuff to ask questions to and to uh, get some real life experiences and answers. So I hope that this can be that for you. So today's question is, what is the dark side of marriage? This is a pretty big question because marriage is... Well, it's supposed to be forever. And if you think about the gravity of marriage and people look at marriage and people write, write um, stuff into their marriage contracts that allows for things to happen if things go sour. But really, that's kind of a horrible way to look at sharing your life with somebody, because really, that's what marriage is. It's 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 a partnership for life. And if you don't look at it like that, then you're probably not going to have the best marriage ever. So. What I think the, the, the dark side of marriage is really has nothing to do with marriage itself. It has to do with the individuals in the marriage. Marriage itself is beautiful. I mean, you think about you're bringing two lives together, two hearts, two minds to create one life, to create a life for family and a, and a home. And, and it's a beautiful thing, but people go into it the wrong way. And that kind of messes it up. And it's really not the marriage. You can't blame the institution, you got to blame the people who are messing it up. And just because a lot of people mess it up doesn't mean it's the institution's fault. It's there's a lot of messed up people. Um, So people tend to take things good and kind of mess them up. You look at uh, pets. Pets are great. Have you ever been to the pound? There's a whole bunch of people that messed up those pets by abandoning them or not treating them right. And there they are. Look at um, pollution people take like go to say if for any of you guys that have been to santa barbara man go walk on the beach in isla vista in santa barbara and walk for about 10 minutes and when you're done the bottom of your feet are black because of the oil rigs out that you can see on the on the horizon leaking oil and and deposits of oil and stuff being left on the beach so beach is pretty much as beautiful as you can get and people have done stuff to mess them up and marriage is kind of the same way have you ever seen a good marriage of course you have everybody has at least one marriage that they've seen that's been that's that's uh kind of shows you how to do it but you don't look at it people don't look at it the right way they don't look at it as a possibility they look at it like a unicorn like oh my god did you see that that's a good marriage that's crazy but then they because there's only one or two of them in their life they don't they don't look at them seriously. So then when they're in relationships, they're not looking at their relationships correctly. And I think one thing that's that really messes up relationships or marriages or anything really is it kind of comes down to knowing yourself. And if you don't know yourself, then you're not really going to be able to get into a relationship with somebody who fits you well because you don't really know yourself. So people have like guidelines for, for marriage. And people have, you know, what they're looking for and their checklist and stuff. But so they look, everything is pushed outwards. So what's, what do they do? What do they look like? What are they, what are their interests? Instead of looking, okay, who am I? What type of a personality do I have? Who do I need to, who can I match up with well? And, and when you, when you don't have that, when you don't look inward and you don't find those pieces that you need to, to match 
you are not going to uh, be able to connect with the right with the right person now and I think a thing that people do is you know marriages relationships are I mean any relationship is compromising you have to compromise in a relationship to make it work but I think people people don't know that a good marriage has kind of limited compromising because it's a it's a good match just li I mean little things like what do you have to compromise like do you get to watch I mean something stupid like do you get to watch the shows you like do you guys both like the same types of movies do you guys like the same types of shows do you guys like the same types of food and there's always a yin and yang to it there's always uh you know she likes this and I don't like that but you know she'll go to this movie with me and I go to that movie with her but how much are you giving up like if you're a huge sports fan should you marry somebody that absolutely hates sports and thinks it's stupid it's probably not the best connection are there examples where people have a great marriage and somebody loves sports and somebody hates sports of course but you have to know you it comes it really comes down to like self-awareness like what can you deal with what can you not deal with like I remember um, a girl I went out with when I was in college she hated South Park which is understandable I mean it's completely it's immature you know like dick and fart joke kind of comedy but it's freaking funny and when it was on and we were together I couldn't watch it and it's, it seems small and stupid but you know on a bigger picture like if you can't share things if you don't have same outlook on certain things then they're gonna cause tension when I'm come home and I want to just sit and watch TV for 20 minutes or a half hour and I can't watch the thing I want to watch that's gonna cause some tension and, you know I and mean, it, it could be any kind of other things it could be music stuff it could be the way you travel it could be the way you deal with issues you have to look at how you deal with issues and you have to look at how they deal with issues and you have to find that balance of compromise but I can tell you from experience that if you're in a good relationship there's not that much compromising there's little things here and there, but the big stuff is uh, you don't have to compromise on it. And just kind of on a side note, don't mistake excitement for happiness. I think that's another big thing that, that people get drawn into with marriage or relationships or other relationships that pull you out of other relationships. You know what I'm talking about? Like no good. Don't mistake excitement for happiness because there's certain things that you can get caught up in in the excitement of it and the adrenaline and it's releasing all kinds of stuff in your body that make you feel good, but it's it's just excitement. It's not happiness. You need to sit back and really look at the situations and really look at the people and decide if, if are you happy with them or is it just exciting? Because a lot of times, especially in relationships, if you take the excitement out of it, if you take, you know, when relationships are new, you're partying all the time, you're being social, you're, you know, you're hooking up a lot. There's, there's things that are exciting about it, but if you pull the excitement out of it, is the relationship still there? So you can't mix up excitement with happiness because you won't be happy for very long once you pull the excitement out. Like I know a lot, I know I have friends that, you know, they have some money and when they get in relationships, they're doing all this, they're going on trips, they're staying in the hotels, they're doing this, they're doing that. And it kind of masks what the relationship actually is because, re you know, relationship comes down to two people. It comes down to two people alone in a house building a life together. It's not running to Vegas. It's not running to, you know, flying to New York, going to Europe, going on trips. So you got to make sure that you don't mistake happiness and excitement. You don't mistake happiness and excitement. That's what I meant to say. So be careful in your relationships. If they're really, really exciting, take out the certain things that you love doing with that person and see if it's the things that you're doing or if it's actually the person. Uh, one other dark side of marriage is not taking the till death do us part seriously. And I honestly think that if you took the, you know, till death to us part, part, jeez, uh, seriously, if you really looked at that aspect of what marriage is, I think people would avoid a lot of crappy marriages. I think if you look at the person you're about to marry and go, okay, I gotta deal with this person every single day for the rest of my life, no matter how old you are, um, I'm gonna have kids with this person, which means I'm no scientist, but 
half of your kid is going to have their personality and half your kid's going to have your personality. If you can't stand the idea of having your kid have 50% of your partner's uh, personality, it's probably not the person to, to end up with. I know I've been in relationships where I go, eh, it's, you know, it's cool. You know, relationships are hard work and this and that. But then when it came down to, could I have a kid with this person? I go, there's no way. My kid would drive me freaking crazy. And then it kind of dawned on me that, you know what? If my kid would drive me crazy because they're 50% of my partner, then I uh, probably shouldn't be with that partner. So look at the forever. Look at the having kids. Look at the personality of your kids. Look at, you kind of got to look at everything. And you're not looking for perfection. You're looking for, you understand what you can handle. You know what you're looking for. You know what you need as an individual. And does that person give it to you? And if they don't, I think looking at it with the kid perspective and looking at it with the forever perspective will really help you. Um, when you find that right person, you'll want forever. In fact, when you find the right person, forever doesn't won't seem long enough. You know, you you the right person is somebody that you and this is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. This is not the person that you want to golf with. This is not the person that you want to start a business with or whatever. And I think if you look at it as, oh, well, we don't have to be together all the time anyways. We do our own thing, blah, blah, blah. It might not be the right person. It could totally work for some people. It could absolutely work for some people. But I know for me, from my perspective, from the relationships that I've been in, the person that you should be with forever is the person that you want to be with. The person that that you love seeing, the person that you love sharing uh, your day with, that you love sharing exciting news with, the person that you can talk to. If, if the person that you're spending, that you're sharing your life with, if you can't share those things, if you can't, if you, if that's not the person you want to share them with, that's probably not the right person. And it sounds like a really high bar to, to set, but it's supposed to be a high bar. It's your life. I mean, it's your life shared with somebody else. And I think if you don't set that bar high, then when you, when you get into the marriage, you're already kind of thinking of your, your out. You're already thinking, eh, well, if this doesn't work out, eh, whatever. Can't look at it like that. If you getting into it, you're going, eh, if this doesn't work out, eh, whatever. Either that's something that you need to work on or that's not the right person you're supposed to, you're supposed to be with. So you like really take, a, take the time to really reflect on what forever is, what creating a life together is what creating new lives and having kids really is and set the bar high the bar has to be high and not everybody is going to find somebody easily and I think what happens is people get to a certain age and they go oh well I'm a certain age and this person's here so this person should be my wife or this person should be my husband you can't go by what societal norms tell you you have to go by who you are you have to go by who they are this whole thing is really personal but you have to take the time to know who you are personally you have to put in the work you have to put in the thoughts you have to put in the learning and if you're not going to do that you will probably end up with the wrong person so the dark side of marriage is not marriage itself it's you and how do you know how well do you know yourself which will then allow you to pick the right partner so if you have any other questions on marriage or the dark side of marriage or you would like to discuss this more you can find me on snapchat find me on twitter you can respond directly in uh, the comments below and I hope this helps. I can't wait to hear your questions. I can't wait to hear what you think. Here to help. See you next time. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Black ass Jones.